Welcome back to the Spy X Family Comparison Series. Now on episode 8, and this one covers chapters 11 and 12. These chapters revert back to a more standard length, and on top of which they're very dialogue heavy, meaning that to fit the time slot, there are a ton of line removals here. We'll cover as many as we can, but again, please do keep in mind that while I'll be showing the translated version to everyone, anytime I mention line changes, I'll be referring to the original Japanese text. Anyways, the adaptation kicks off in Anya's math class, and since we can see the board much clearer in the anime, as well as the fact that Anya is now sitting in the middle row, this simple problem should be no problem for someone who studied really hard last night. But even still, she got that question wrong spectacularly. You know, it's almost like Lloyd could sense she just screwed up with that new shot of him shaking his hands. Makes it much easier for his handler to tell just how little confidence he has in Anya. As for where these two are, this place they chose does seem to be a little more sequestered since it's no longer on the side of the street. A place much more suitable for talking about how scary the SSS is. And as it turns out, they're on the move right now to arrest a guy named Jim Hayward. Good thing his assistant is no longer in this room because when the SSS badge is shown, now without the SSS, things start to get a little scrappy off screen. These guys really don't mess around. In the manga alone, they even glare at some of the other workers on their way out, which was more than enough to scare Millie, who the anime clearly shows was there this time. This girl really is a piece of work because despite this, she still wishes it was her own boss that was taken away. Something that the anime doesn't really show us is that it instead goes right to Camilla entering the room. And with her, she brought some very interesting line changes. See, in the manga, she would say that she knew that her boyfriend ran into Yuri yesterday, but in the anime she just says that her boyfriend told her about Yor's marriage. Not sure why this is the case, because she kinda already knew this six episodes ago. I've gone through this line as much as I can, but maybe someone who's a little more fluent in Japanese can shine some light on this line change. But for now, we have a lot more cut lines to talk about. Starting with Millie here, who was bewildered at Yor's forgetfulness, as well as some more cut portions of Yor's frantic thoughts putting her forgetfulness in more context, and even some more cut lines from Millie asking Yor to set her up with Yuri despite already having a boyfriend. But enough about her, now we're at the SSS building, something the anime alone tells us but doesn't take a genius to figure out as there seems to be a lot of quote unquote innocent people here. The anime doesn't show this part though, instead moving right along into Jim Hayward who's currently getting interrogated. And like the narrator said, a lot of devious methods are used by the SSS to get the information they need, the least of which being secondhand smoke. Smoke that's much more prevalent in the anime version, but I'd say the biggest threat in this building might just be Yuri here who just took over the interrogation. A man that's regarded pretty highly by his boss. Yuri's such a wild card that his following lines gushing about his sister have been moved all over the place. That's just how much he can't wait until he sees Yor tonight, even though he hasn't actually told her he's coming yet. And as a matter of fact, he doesn't even give the guy a chance to say he's not a spy before immediately throwing some cold hard evidence his way. And maybe since we can see more pictures right off the bat, the recorder doesn't even have to pick one up this time to be shocked that Yuri never submitted this stuff to begin with. So after Hayward spills the beans, albeit in a less articulate way with some inconsequential grammar taken out, this is when Yuri brings up the name Twilight, a mysterious man that no one's ever seen the true face of, but Yuri still sees him as his true enemy, not just the enemy of the SSS as he states in the manga. So compared to Twilight, this guy here is nothing but lightweight trash in the eyes of Yuri, as Jim just casually broadcasted that he doesn't see cheating as a big deal when you're married. He doesn't technically say this in the anime, but it still rubs Yuri the wrong way because of this guy's sheer lack of commitment to his country and loved ones. He's so pissed off that he actually dunked this guy's face into the ashtray this time around. Yuri may be young for a job like this, but he clearly gets his ferocity from his sister. An exercise like torture seems like something that would come second nature to him. And speaking of torture, back at home, Anya's watching a part of her Bond Man cartoon that really doesn't seem like it's meant for children, while Lloyd wonders why Anya's attention works the way it does. Much to his delight though, Bond Man does seem to help her understand her fractions a little better. Anime is a great medium for learning after all, and it really gets Anya hyped for how much ammunition Bond Man has. <laughs> Lloyd will definitely remember that, but for now, Yor just came in to present a new problem to Lloyd, and normally when she says Tai Hen, she says four Ta's to start off her sentence, but this time it's ten. That's just how shocked she was to finally get that call from Yuri off screen, so of course she would need to consult the family for an impromptuous meeting before tonight happens. And during this meeting, she actually cuts her explanation short here with a couple of removed lines, but it was still enough for Lloyd to know that what they need is the special fake love kit he prepared for special occasions like this one. It is a 
tad much though, don't you think, Lloyd? Something makes me think that he never looked at this stuff before he put it all together. He set that whole thing up pretty fast, but it looks like he had plenty of time to spare since it's already 9 o'clock and Yuri still isn't anywhere to be seen. But still, it's nice that we get to see Lloyd and Anya read Spy Wars together. Lloyd probably picked up Volume 1 after he realized Anya can learn from this series. Such a great scene, and it's made even better with how Anya falls on her dad's lap this time when she passes out. Though they did unfortunately remove the scene of Lloyd carrying her to her room while Yor talks about her brother some more. A brother that steadily approaches with one hell of a bouquet, housing flowers that seem to have been upgraded to roses. A very bizarre sight for an anime-exclusive woman to witness as Yuri reminisces about his broken ribs. A moment that the manga alone even shows us briefly. And while this doting brother is on his way up to the Forger residence, Lloyd and Yor, perhaps sensing his arrival, are getting some tableware ready, and Yor even starts making some anime-only coffee. After all, it's gonna be a long night, and both sides need to make sure they don't slip up no matter what, because keeping secrets hidden will be what keeps that thin veneer of peace alive. Those are the narrator's words, not mine. And it's fitting that they're here, because when the next chapter starts, all of the narrator's following lines talking about how important and fragile peace is have been cut. What has been kept in, though, is the TV currently broadcasting the peace talks between both countries, as it serves as a great parallel between the Prime Minister's handshakes and Lloyd and Yuri's. Though it is a little strange that they're just randomly laughing with each other instead of, you know, just greeting each other normally. Man, Anya would have loved to hear the thoughts of these three right now. Even if Lloyd wasn't involved, the thoughts between Yuri and Yor alone would still be incredibly exciting. Though a good deal of it is pretty entertaining out loud, as after Yor takes the bouquet, something we only see her do in the anime, and then set them up next to all the photoshopped photos, Yuri then lets out some of his misgivings about Yor not telling him about the marriage earlier. All while Lloyd chops some stuff and or does the dishes, and starts to remember the discussion he had with Yor earlier. And during that time, Yor assured Lloyd with some very slight wording changes that she has a rock solid plan for dealing with Yuri. And that plan is to be as absolutely dumb as possible. It might sound absurd to Lloyd the intellectual, but it's actually brilliant, because while feigning ignorance is one of the more straightforward lies there are, it works super well on someone who looks at the wire with a straightforward view, even if they are usually more cynical by nature. Which is exactly why, when it comes to Lloyd, he is highly judgmental of everything he does and says, so of course he would feel like the only way to get Lloyd to reveal his true self would be to get some alcohol in him. Once again, there is some shortened grammar when he says this in his head, but one thing that was said out loud this time was when Lloyd told Yor not to drink. Ballsy moved to whisper that, but at least he kept it short in the anime by not saying how she blacked out and almost killed him last time. Though drunk or not, when asked a simple question like where did they meet, she still flubs up a little with this cut line, but of course she still gets the part of how Lloyd eyeballed her at the boutique shop, right? Lloyd's trying to change the topic for the better, but wherever he steers the conversation doesn't seem to help much. Yuri really falls apart though when he comes to the conclusion himself that Yor must be calling Lloyd Lloydy. Not Floy Loy of his media, though he did also come up with that one. Lloyd, he really is a good guy though, Yuri. He even got some water for you. Minus the point that he used to hand to Yor while Yuri slowly builds up his anger again. And when he explodes yet again, this time he decided to use the whole bottle to drink away his frustrations. Lloyd can tell that this guy is getting set off by the tiniest of things, so once again he tries to divert the conversation into grounds that he can more easily predict. But little did he know that when Yuri started talking about his time in Hugaria, it would be an entirely made up one, talking talking about the restaurant Yuri supposedly found near the embassy. Information that the manga alone gives us. And that's not the only thing that was left out. When Lloyd broke down this story in his head, he no longer mentions the part that the owner of that restaurant only left it to his son due to his back pain four months ago, or that if Yuri checked his details, he would have said otherwise. These are the details that help Lloyd come to the conclusion that Yuri really is a part of the SSS. Score one for Lloyd. But while Lloyd was putting this all together in his head, it seems Yor made the mistake of calling Lloyd Yuri's new big brother. And of course Yuri didn't like that, as it brings him to recount his past to Lloyd and how Lloyd could never amount to to how amazing Yor is. Not only did she work herself ragged for her little brother every day, but she always seemed to bring a new gift with her no matter how bloody she looked coming home. Now it makes perfect sense why he's always so concerned for his sister's well-being. Yuri may be a tad unreasonable at times, but it's perfectly sensible to be mad about a husband that just randomly appeared out of thin air. Of course he would feel like Lloyd has a lot to prove before coming to terms with this arrangement. And that reassurance is exactly what Lloyd plans to give him by throwing some really convincing words back Yuri's way. Now this 
House is another line change, but this one is especially interesting because just like in episode 4, all mentions of a nuclear bomb have been removed. In place of it, Lloyd says that he could protect Yor from a meteor. They're both very destructive things, so it makes sense for Yuri to still act the same way regardless. However, he actually really starts to get suspicious when Lloyd and Yor's hands touch by the way they react. Showing a two-handed heart afterwards won't really cover that up. In the manga, they presented him with that photoshopped picture, but this likely wasn't put in because that picture should be on the other side of the room. Not that it would change Yuri's mind anyways, as he believes that the only way it can be proven beyond a shadow of a doubt that they're really in love is to have them lock lips right then and there. A request that neither of them were prepared for, but Twilight at least, being the quick thinker he is, managed to mentally prepare himself in only a tenth of a second. Yor, on the other hand, doesn't really have that same rationalization prowess, so when Lloyd makes the first move on her, she was really caught off guard. What a cliffhanger. This episode was really interesting to cover, mainly because of its line revisions. I mentioned a lot in this video, but there were also some small ones that I didn't even feel were worth talking about, and that includes those little lines outside of the text boxes. For an episode like this one, most of those didn't make it in either, but it was a necessary sacrifice to hit the desired time slot, and in the broad scheme of things, the information lost really wasn't that vital. Most of the time, these lines were just simplified without really skimping on the details, which is something that really deserves praise. We'll see what comes of that kiss in the next episode, but if you enjoyed the breakdown of this episode, then make sure to give the video a like and share it with a friend. And hey, also get subscribed for more Spy X Family comparison content. You can also check me out on Patreon if you're feeling generous. I'd highly appreciate it. Well, that's it for me. As always, I hope you all have a fantastic day. This is Registry, signing off.